Within our body, there's a great number of different types of neurons that are found within the nervous system. Now, these neurons differ from one another not only in their size and shape, but they also differ in the speed at which they move the action potential along the axon of that neuron. Now, some of these neurons in our body are capable of moving action potentials at speeds over 100 meters per second, while other neurons are capable of moving action potentials at speeds of only one meter per second. The question is, what exactly determines the speed at which that action potential moves along the axon of the neuron within our body? Now, let's begin by recalling some physics. Now, if we study the movement of the action potential along the axon from a physics perspective, we see that the action potential is nothing more than a moving electric current, and the axon is nothing more than a biological wire. So recall that what determines the velocity with which the current moves inside the wire is the resistance of that wire to the flow of that current. Now resistance itself de uh, depends on three important factors. So recall that the resistance of an electric current moving inside a wire depends on the cross-sectional area of that wire, its thickness, it depends on the length of that wire, and it also depends on an internal property known as the resistivity, which basically depends on the type of material that that wire is made of. So this equation basically summarizes what we just said. So this equation describes the relationship between the resistance as well as the length, the area, and our resistivity. So so the resistance of the wire is equal to the product of our resistivity rho multiplied by L the length divided by A its cross-sectional area. And from this, from this equation we see that if we increase the length, we increase the numerator and so we increase our resistance and because the resistance is high, that means the velocity will be low. On the other hand, if we increase the area, the denominator will increase and that will decrease the resistance and so it will increase the velocity of that current inside that wire. So this equation tells us that a wire that is thick and which is short will propagate the current at a higher velocity because the resistance will be lower. Now, we can actually treat the axon as if it was that wire, and we can treat the action potential as if it was that moving electric current. In fact, an action potential is a moving electric current. So from this same equation, we can see that an axon with a larger diameter will propagate that action potential much quicker because the larger diameter means we have a larger area and a thicker area, and so that means a lower resistance. At the same exact time, if we decrease the length of that axon, we decrease the L, and so we decrease our resistance, and we increase the speed of the movement of that action potential inside our axon. And this is summarized in these two diagrams. So in diagram A, we have an axon that is thick and that is short. In diagram two, in diagram B, we have a long axon that is very thin. Now, from our, <clears throat> from our discussion above, we see that diagram B describes the axon that would ultimately propagate that action potential at a much greater rate than diagram B because in A, we have a large area and a small length and that would decrease the resistance inside that axon. Now, of course, because the size of our body is limited, that means the length and the thickness of that axon is also limited. That is, we cannot actually make our axon too thick or too short or too long. Now, instead of actually increasing the area or, or um, increasing the area or decreasing the length of the axon, the way that our body 
uh, increases the speed at which our action potential moves along the axon is by using a special type of insulating material. So special types of cells known as glial cells found inside the nervous system cover the axon of the neuron with a special insulating material known as the myelin. And this myelin or myelin sheet basically increases the speed at which our neuron propagates that action potential as we'll see in just a moment. So basically our nervous system can be broken down into two categories. We have the central nervous system, so that's the brain and the spinal cord, and we also have our peripheral nervous system. And both of these categories contain their own glial cells. So Schwann cells are the cells found in the peripheral nervous system, while oligodendrocytes are those glial cells found in the central nervous system. And what these cells do is they they move around the axon of the neuron and they basically cover that neuron at specific sections with a layer of insulating myelin. Now because the myelin is insulating what that means is no action potential can actually be generated on the cell membrane where it is covered with that myelin material. Now, just because the cell membrane is actually covered with that myelin material, that does not mean that no electric signal can travel through that axon. In fact, even though this section, let's say this section of the axon is covered with the myelin, our electric current can still travel through the cytoplasm, through the cytosol of our cell. And that's exactly how that signal will get from one node to the next node, as we'll see in just a moment. So instead, the current moves through the cytosol of the axon until it reaches a part of the membrane that is not myelinated. And these gaps where we do not have any myelination as shown on this diagram and this diagram. So these are the gaps and these are the gaps here. These are known as nodes of Ranvia. So basically at the nodes of Ranvia, we do not have any myelination. In fact, we have a great number of so sodium voltage gated channels and because we have such a great number of voltage gated channels sodium voltage gated channels at the nodes of Ranvia that will greatly increase our sensitivity to depolarization. So to see what we mean by this, let's take a look at the following diagram. So this diagram basically describes how our action potential moves along an axon that is myelinated as shown in this diagram. So this is our cell body, these are the dendrites, and this is our um, axon. If we take a cross section of this axon, we basically get the following diagram. So let's suppose we stimulate our axon hillock as shown and an action potential is generated at the axon hillock. As it begins to move along, eventually it gets to the cell membrane that contains the myelinated sheath. And so as soon as it gets to that sheath, no more action potential can actually travel through the cell membrane. Instead, that electric signal will propagate at a much quicker rate through the cytoplasm of the cell. So this is the cytoplasm, this is the outside region, these are the myelinated sheets, and these are the nodes of Ranvia. Remember, the nodes of Ranvia are gaps that occur at regular intervals between the segments of the myelin sheet, and these gaps contain a great number of sodium channels. So as this electric current moves into this node, what happens is this signals the depolarization process process and the voltage gated sodium channels open up and our flux influx of sodium ions goes into our cell and that depolarizes the cell and creates the action potential. Now that basically amplifies our electric signal and sends it 
through the cytoplasm because the action potential cannot travel through this myelinated cell membrane. And so it really quickly travels to the next node, creates that depolarization, creates that action potential. Once again, that action potential cannot actually travel through the cell membrane. And so the signal travels through the cytoplasm until it gets to the third node and this continues and this jumping process in which our action potential jumps from one node to the next node to the third node this process is known as saltatory conduction and saltatory conduction greatly speeds up the movement of our action potential because instead of the action potential actually moving through the entire membrane, which would slow it down, it basically moves only through these certain sections known as the node of Ranvia. And this greatly speeds up the process of the, of the propagation of that action potential. So on top of increasing the thickness of our axon and decreasing the length of that axon, another way that our body can speed up the propagation of that action potential is by using these cells, glial cells, to myelinate or insulate certain sections of the axon and that leads to this propagation mechanism known as saltatory conduction.